Now this is the turn for the next question that is question number 27. Acetylene torches and the burners used by glass blowers produce intense ultraviolet light. This is a fact. Glass blowers wear special glasses that contain which of the following elements to absorb the UV radiation. This is basically the application based question and if we are talking about the substance the element which is actually absorbing UV radiation is neodymium. This is correct, this neodymium and presodymium, right? Neodymium and presodymium. So these two options are correct and definitely these questions are those in which you have more than one correct answer. So option A and option B, both are correct. C is not the correct one. While if I talk about this didymium, this is basically the mixture of these two, neodymium and Presodymium, right? So I'm just writing here the correct answer. Both option A and B are the correct answer one. Hope it is clear. Easy question it was. Now the turn is there for the next question. Question number 28 is here. Equal lengths of magnesium ribbons are taken in four test tubes A, B, C and D. Okay. Let me just mark. Four test tubes are there A, B, C and D. Now in test tube A, one molar acetic acid is added. In test tube B, one molar HCl is added. In test tube C, if you talk about one molar HNO3 is added. And in the test tube D, one molar NaOH is added. If you just look at the substances given here, these are this HCl and that HNO3, strong acids. And if I'm talking about NaOH, strong base it is. But if I'm talking about acetic acid, weak acid it is, organic acid it is, okay. Now, further what they are asking, the observed results will be. So, first of all, you have to just look at, you have just four test tubes. So, I am just writing A, B, C and D. These are the test tubes and in these test tubes, equal lengths of magnesium ribbons are taken in four test tubes. So, here is also magnesium and it is going to react with acetic acid. Right? Same ways. Here also magnesium is there and that magnesium is going to react with the second thing that is HCl. In the test tube C, there is the same amount, 1 molar HNO3. And in the fourth test tube, there is 1 molar NaOH. The observations are the fizzing occurs more vigorously in A. The fizzing occurs more vigorously in B. Fizzing occurs more vigorously in C or in D. That you need to find out. So just look at magnesium. This is reactive metal. If you know about the reactivity series, definitely you can say it is able to react with acids to produce hydrogen. Okay. Now here, when magnesium is reacting with acetic acid, a weak acid, less fizzing would be there. But if magnesium is reacting with HCl or HNO3, more fizzing would be there because HCl and HNO3 both are strong acids. These are strong acids. So both of them are causing more fizzing, right? But if I'm talking about this NaOH, what it is doing? It is a base. As it is a base, this NaOH is a base, so definitely it's not going to react with magnesium. Magnesium is not reacting with strong base right so it's reacting with these three but the more fizzing sound you will observe in this case and this case it means the test tube b and test tube c now the turn is there to look at the options right so if you look at the first option the fizzing occurs more vigorously in a absolutely incorrect it is but the fizzing occurs more vigorously in b and the fizzing occurs more vigorously in c is correct right so on the basis of this which answer you have chosen answer is option b and c and i hope this question is clear to you all now this was the last question of the chemistry section and the turn is there to move towards the next question